and my hope is that by encouraging integration, that the countries who are doing better. On issues like democracy and human rights have a positive influence in bringing up those. Countries that don't have such a good record. And we've actually I think seen that happen. Listen, when I first came into office, Myanmar was still very much a dictatorship. And there was some controversy about me participating in an ASEAN summit because there was still no freedom in Myanmar. And I think that President Thien Sen, because he was with leaders like SBY of Indonesia see there. All right, the Indonesians started cheering who had traveled the path of democracy. I think President Thien Sen began to see how more open societies were becoming more successful. and I think had a positive influence on I think his participation in ASEAN had a positive influence in providing an opening to begin the process of transition here in Myanmar. But it's important I think that even as we engage with countries that are less open or less democratic. That we also continue to apply constructive criticism where they fall backwards, where they fall short. And sometimes that's hard to do. I think a lot of the leaders of ASEAN don't. Like to criticize each other because they think that it's not respectful. And no country is perfect, so they worry that if we criticize one country then somebody will criticize us. But I think the goal should be for all of us to try to Improve what we do on behalf of our people every single day. I'm very proud of the United States. I believe that the United States is a force for good around the world.
but I wouldn't be a good president if I don't listen to criticism. Of our policies and stay open to what other countries say about us. Sometimes I think those criticisms are unfair. Sometimes I think people like to complain about the United States because we're doing too much. Sometimes they complain because they're doing too little. Every problem around the world, why isn't the United States doing something about it? Sometimes there are countries that don't take responsibility for themselves and they want us to fix it. And then when we do try to fix it, they say why are you meddling in our affairs? Yes, it's kind of frustrating sometimes. But the fact that we are getting these criticisms means that we're constantly thinking. Okay. Is this how we should apply this policy? Are we doing the right thing when we provide aid to a country? But the country is still ruled by a small elite and maybe it's not getting down to the people? Are we doing the right thing when we engage in training a military to become more professional? But maybe the military is still engaging in repressive activity? If we're not open to those criticisms, then we won't get better, we won't improve. And I think all of us should be interested in trying to get better. Because none of us are perfect and no country is perfect. So I do think ASEAN has an opportunity to play a very important role. But integration is inevitable just because of the nature of economies today. There's too much travel, there's too much internet, there are too many smartphones.
when I was driving through here, everybody had a smartphone. I saw a bunch of people they didn't have any shirt, but they had a smartphone. So what that means is and most manufacturing today of various products, the parts are made in. Like, five different countries, and then they become integrated in some fashion. And then they're sold all around the world. So integration is going to happen no matter what. The question is, do we integrate at a high level that improves freedom and improves opportunity? Or are we integrating at a low level, where there's less freedom and less opportunity? And I believe integrating at a high level, and I hope most members of ASEAN do also. All right, it's a guy's turn now. I don't want to discriminate against the men. This gentleman right here. Yes. With the mustache and the beard. There you go. There's a microphone coming right here. You can just stay. Where you are. Careful. Hold on to her, so she doesn't fall. Question, hello, MR. President Obama. My name is Inaudible and I am studying law. My question is, now we are in the democratic transition. So our country is facing so many challenges in every sector. So if you were the president of Myanmar which sector you will focus on first? and how you will make our country develop. Thank you. President Obama, well, let me just say, 
you're always popular in somebody else's country. When you're in your own country, everybody is complaining. I think you're right, Myanmar has so many challenges. I think the most important challenge right now is completing the transition to democracy. And so my first focus is I think the focus that many people have already talked about. Number 1, there needs to be an election next year. It shouldn't be delayed. Number 2. There should be constitutional amendments that ensure a transition over time to a fully civilian government. Number 3, there needs to be laws put in place to protect freedom of the press. Freedom of expression, freedom to politically organize. And I think that if that process is fixed and institutionalized and made permanent. And you now have the tools to deal with all the other challenges. And I think that inevitably what would happen if you had a genuine democracy in Myanmar is the focus next would. Then be on providing economic opportunity, because Myanmar is still a very poor country. And what we know in the 21st century is, is that the most important tools for economic opportunity are making sure that young people are getting a good education. And my understanding is, is that the education system in Myanmar is still underdeveloped. I think all of you represent the best of Myanmar's students. But my understanding is there are many villages you go to where there's really no schools. As a practical matter, and many of the schools still teach just how.
to memorize certain things rather than how to think critically about problems. And every country at this point, if it wants to succeed, needs to put in place free. Compulsory education for its young people because they just can't succeed unless they have some basic skills. They have to be able to read. They have to be able to do mathematics. They have to have some familiarity with computers. They have to be able to understand basic principles of science. If you don't have those basic tools, then it's very hard to find a decent job in today's economy. Now, because Myanmar is still very agricultural, I think issues of land reform and trying to Increase productivity in the agricultural sector is also a very immediate and urgent problem. This is true not just in Myanmar, this is true in many relatively poor countries. In Africa, for example, we initiated something called Feed the Future. And the whole goal is to improve the productivity of farmers. And farmers in many poor countries, they still use the same techniques that they used 200 years ago. They're still using a buffalo or an ox, and waiting on the rains. And sometimes the new techniques, they're not necessarily expensive. It's just a matter of applying them scientifically. And if you double yields for a farm and double income for farmers in a country like Myanmar. Suddenly you have increased wealth, which means that some people now can start businesses. Maybe now somebody can take some of the profits they made and invest in a tractor.
or they can start processing the rice that they produce so that they can gain more value. Or they may be able to buy a smartphone so they know what the prices are in the market. And not get taken advantage of. So just small changes are really important. Now, my understanding, and I'm not expert, is that some of that will also require some reforms. In terms of land ownership and leasing so that people can keep the products of their labor. as opposed to just being essentially what we call sharecroppers in the United States. Where you're working the land, but you're giving it over to somebody else and never getting ahead. So those are just two examples of things that I think will happen naturally if you've got a democratic system in place. All right, it's a young lady's turn. So this young lady in the glasses right here. She's waving very hard, so she must have an excellent question. Question, good morning. My name is inaudible. President Obama, it's afternoon, though. Maybe you've been waiting here since morning. But now it's the afternoon. Question, but you can call me Amy PH. I want to ask one question. My question is now we are working on IT, so America is already doubled up in IT. So can you provide any development center of IT and job opportunity for youth? President Obama, well, I was just talking to the civil society groups.
and there was one person there who mentioned that internet penetration in Myanmar is still only about 9%. which means there's enormous room for growth. The issue for IT in a country like Myanmar is, first of all, setting up the infrastructure whether it's wireless or other methods.